All right, so in this week's Goodread episode, I want to talk a little bit about adenosine with pre-excitation, specifically adenosine with WPW. We'll start with the case, as always. 21-year-old with syncope and palpitations. So we can see right away that this is a concerning 12 lead. We see an incredibly rapid rate, sometimes approaching near 300 beats per minute. We can see it's irregularly irregular. And we can see that there are varying heights to the QRS complexes. Uh, we can appreciate that here in ABR. And so this is a 12 lead to memorize because this is WPW with AFib. I want to talk a little bit about why we should be avoiding adenosine in these patients because it can often deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation. So it's a little bit less about try to include some 12 lead recognition, but I want to talk a little bit more about the physiology because this is where I feel like most of the questions originate from. We can memorize that 12 lead all we want. It's pretty obvious. It's really fast, irregularly irregular. We need to be concerned about AFib with WPW. Let's talk about the normal conduction system of the heart. We have the SA node, the AV node, bundle of his into the Purkinje fibers that go out into the ventricles. So I want to take a moment and talk a little bit about the role of the AV node. So the AV node's function is actually to temporarily pause conduction. And the reason that it does this is to allow for ventricular filling. This is what's responsible for the PR interval on our EKG. And so in a, let's just say, I say normal, quote unquote, normal patient with atrial fibrillation, the atria is fibrillating at a rate of 300 to 600 beats per minute. But if there's only one conduction pathway, that's SA node to AV node or an AFib, the entire atrial system is fibrillating. There's only one way for those impulses to get down into the ventricles, and that's through the AV node. But if the AV node is functioning properly, many of those impulses of the 300 to 600 are terminating within the AV node because the AV node is like a temporary pause or a checkpoint. And so a lot of the impulses either just terminate within the AV node, and then as a result, we get to see a controlled ventricular rate. This is why patients with AFib don't just automatically deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation is because the AV node is physiologically doing its job. So we're going to contrast that to WPW, which I'll put over here. So in WPW, an accessory pathway exists between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It has a name. It's known as the bundle of Kent. And oftentimes you'll hear it termed as an accessory pathway or sometimes pre-excitation. All terms that mean the same thing. Just bundle of Kent is what it is anatomically. To contrast, we said the AV node's role is as a temporary pause to conduction to allow for ventricular filling. The bundle of Kent, however, has none of those physiologic properties. It is exclusively a detour. It is a straight through detour from the atria to the ventricles. So now let's set the stage for AFib with WPW. So we have the two conduction pathways. We have option number one through the AV node. And then we have the bundle of Kent. In AFib with WPW, the atria is beating somewhere between 300 to 600 beats per minute. It is just fibrillating, just like in VFib, unorganized electrical activity. The atria is fibrillating between 300 to 600 beats per minute. Now, in a patient with this condition, AFib with WPW, the atrial impulses have two options to come down. One is either through the AV node or the second is through this bundle of Kent pathway. That's why we're seeing rates near 300. And this is why we're seeing various or varying heights of the QRS complexes because some look normal going down the AV node and some look taller or different because they're going through the accessory pathway. So this is the reason why is because there's two different impulses that the ventricles can now receive input from the atria, either through the AV node or the bundle of Kent. The problem becomes when we go to control this. When we give adenosine, adenosine is very specific and acts exclusively on this AV node. And so if we take the AV node out of the equation, these patients with AFib with WPW are barely holding on because the AV node is being overwhelmed, right? Like the AV node cannot terminate all these impulses if the other ones are going down the detour pathway through the bundle of Kent. So when we give adenosine, what we essentially do is we completely eliminate the AV node out of the equation. And in an electrical conduction system, what ends up happening? Electricity will always take the path of least resistance. And that is down the bundle of Kent or the accessory pathway. So now the atria fibrillating at a rate of 300 to 600 beats per minute 
all of those impulses are now shuttled down the bundle of Ken through the accessory pathway and in to the ventricles, giving the ventricles a rate of 300 to 600, which is otherwise known as VFib. So this is the reason why we should be avoiding adenosine in the setting of AFib with WPW. So hope that physiology made a little bit of sense. Here are two other examples, and we can once again see irregularly irregular, varying heights and morphologies to the QRS complexes, and then incredibly fast rates, sometimes 280 to 300 beats per minute. We can appreciate that here. And here's another 12 lead example where we can see intermittent runs. We may see our usual AFib RVR out here. And then we can see, I would definitely say from here to here, definitely accessory pathway conduction. So 12 lead, easy to memorize, physiology of why we should be avoiding adenosine. And honestly, the number one and most recommended treatment choice for this is to shock the patient. Just cardiovert them. If you're in an agency or hospital system that carries procainamide, procainamide is the drug of choice because it actually tends to work on the accessory pathway, not the AV node. But for all intents and purposes, we should be shocking and cardioverting these patients out of this arrhythmia. So I hope that made sense. Adenosine, absolutely contraindicated in the setting of AFib with WPW.